Today is going to be a good one. It's part two of our build a team series. And today we have the NFC North. If you guys missed uh, Wednesday's video, go check that out to get the overall premise. We're going to run through it again here on today's show. But uh, again, we're going to go through all eight divisions, build the best lineup possible, and it should be tons of fun. But before we get into that, if you enjoy the channel at any point, please support us down below. Well, if you subscribe or just like the video, it all goes a very long way as we're now on the road to 500 subscribers here on the channel. That's the next big milestone, and we can't get there without you guys, right? But without further ado, this is the Anomaly Podcast. Let's get into the NFC North. All right, we're going to give you the quick rundown here as, again, we have four different positions. We need a quarterback. We need a running back, receiver, and tight end. We have four teams in the division. The Bears, the Lions, the Vikings, and Packers. But here's the twist. We have to draft these players based off of current day fantasy football ADP. And these players can only be from the third round or later in drafts. So they're going, there is no, there's not going to be any Justin Jeffersons in this video, right? Who, who's going as the 101. There's not going to be any first or second round guys in these videos because we're talking about values. It's easy to start your draft off the right way, but can you get the right pieces to fill out the roster and complement your stars to really put your team over the top here in fantasy football? And we're going to get right into it. We're going to start here at the quarterback. I kind of spoiled it, right? But no doubt, Justin Fields is going to be the way here for the Chicago Bears. Another guy I contemplated was DJ Moore, right? A guy they traded for this offseason. You can get him in the fifth round, and he's going to be the number one wide receiver in, in hopefully a, a more pass-happy offense. And then another guy in Darnell Mooney, right? If you don't believe in DJ Moore, go out there and get Darnell Mooney in the 11th round, right? So I think it's definitely worth a flyer of a shot to grab a Darnell or DJ Moore here in 2023. But to me, the best overall value for the Chicago Bears and for this division was going with Justin Fields at the quarterback position. He's a top 10 fantasy quarterback for me right now. No shocker there, right? I've seen guys have him as top, uh, as far as top two, right? As high as top two, top three. I'm not that crazy. I have him more so with the, the 7 to 10 range. But this is a guy that ran for 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns last year, averaging a league high seven yards per carry at the quarterback position. In week nine of last year against the Dolphins, this is a guy that ran for 178 yards and one touchdown, breaking the single game rushing record for a quarterback. <laughs> no, no biggie, right? Then in week 10, the next week, he runs for 150 yards and another two touchdowns. <laughs> Again, people, this is a quarterback doing numbers like this. This, this isn't often, right? We don't, we don't see this often. Uh, I don't even know if Lamar Jackson had back-to-back -back weeks of that dominance on the ground at the quarterback position. But there's no doubt we want to see a major improvement in the passing production for Justin Fields. But he, he was the quarterback six last year with playing two less games, a terrible low line, and no receiving group to throw to, right? So imagine what he, get, what he can do with DJ Moore in town now, with an improved O line and more confidence to push the ball down the field. Uh, I, I can only imagine, right, with more passing volume, this is a guy that could be a top five quarterback for years and years to come. You know, and I am excited to take, you know, I'm excited to see if he can take that next major leap like a Jalen Hurts did this year. Uh, he's incredible value in the fifth or sixth round of your drafts, especially if you don't want to take a second round quarterback. He's incredible value in the fifth or sixth rounds of your drafts. And to be completely honest, he was really the only option for the Chicago Bears here because I don't really care for any of the other values for these other players on the team. But Justin Fields, I'm not complaining. He's the quarterback for the NFC North. Moving over to the running back position, I'm going to go with Jameer Gibbs, the rookie out of Alabama. Some other guys I contemplated for the Detroit Lions were David Montgomery, right, Monty. I love Monty. Uh, you can get him in the seventh round, and I think Monty's going to have double-digit touchdowns this year. So he was definitely a close running for this pick, as he's definitely more of a value than Jameer Gibbs. But Jameer Gibbs has more upside, and that's the only reason I'm going with Jameer Gibbs here. Uh, you can also talk about Sam Laporta, the rookie tight end they drafted. Jared Goff. Even J-Mo, right, after he comes back from his suspension. But I'm going to talk about Jameer Gibbs as he's maybe probably the most surprising pick of the first round of the, of the real-life NFL draft because he was drafted with the 12th pick in the first round, right? So the draft capital is there with him. The team wants to use him from day one, and all reports say that Detroit wants to use him in a multitude of ways. Sometimes at receiver, sometimes at running back. 
they're going to use him, and, and they're going to use utilize him to his p- fullest potential. Uh, but now, this team did bring in David Montgomery, as I mentioned, and that does limit the upside of Jameer Gibbs because Monty's probably going to have double-digit touchdowns on the ground. He's going to have all the goal line work like Jamal Williams did last year. However, when it comes to everything else in the game and all of the passing work, I, it, it's going to be Jameer Gibbs for me, and that's why the hype train is so real behind Jameer Gibbs around the fantasy community as he was a receiving back in college, he's going to be a receiving back in the pros, and for us full PPR players, this makes it even more of an intriguing pick because he's going to have that value, and I think even a lot of stability. Why not go out there in the early fourth round, draft a value in Jameer Gibbs, and he's a guy that could really be a top 10 running back and take your team over the top, right? These are the shots you have to take in fantasy football. If it misses, it misses. You still have three stable top three picks. But why not go out there and take the chance on a guy like Jameer Gibbs, right? That's all I'm getting at here. But moving over to the Packers, and we're going to go with Christian Watson at the wide receiver position. Uh, I could consider Aaron Jones, which is my favorite value from the Packers, right? But we couldn't go two running backs. Um, and we can go with A.J. Dillon even, or even Romeo Dubs. But to me, I'm going to go with Christian Watson, and I'll start this by saying that I'm not the biggest believer in Christian Watson, right? I don't believe the, in, in the hype as much as other people But with this challenge and how it's laid out, I had to go with the best receiver for the Packers. And that was, again, Christian Watson. Uh, This is a guy that did have a promising rookie year, right? 36 uh, receptions, 500 plus yards, 7 touchdowns. And he did do all of this while uh, battling some injuries early on in the season and not taking a prominent role until like week 10 or week 11 in the season, right? So he did a lot of his damage in the last, uh, really, two months of the season. Um, And and he's going to go from a Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers to first-year starter in Jordan Love, right? We know that. But I don't believe the drop-off is going to be as severe as other people think, as I've been on the Jordan Love bandwagon since his days at Utah State. I believe in the talent. I believe what he can do at the highest level, especially to me, if he sat behind Aaron Rodgers for three years, he's going to be sharper than we all think. Now, since I do believe in Jordan Love, and I do think he's going to be successful He has to be successful through the air, throwing to someone, right? And the number one in this offense is Christian Watson. It should be an interesting year in Green Bay, but I think definitely if you want to take the mid-fourth-round shot on a guy like Christian Watson, it's not a bad route to go, you know, in all honesty. And we're going to finish off here at the tight end position with TJ Hawkinson, the tight end three, or I think tight end two of last year. But this is a guy that, to me, I mean, you could consider Alexander Madison, Jordan Addison, which is a guy I've been high on all offseason. But again, with how the challenge has been laid out, it it just made the most sense to go with the best tight end in the division, which was TJ Hawkinson. But uh, Kirk Cousins, KJ Osborne are other guys that are values on this Minnesota team. But let's dive into uh, TJ Hawkinson. As in seven games with the Lions last year, before the trade deadline, he was only averaging six targets a game, and he only had 26 total receptions in those seven games. After he was traded to his division uh, opponent, right, his division foe, the Minnesota Vikings, Hawkinson's numbers jumped up. He averaged 8.5 targets a game, and he had 60 receptions in the final 10 games of the year. All of those games, of course, with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Not to mention, Adam Thielen is gone, and so is Dalvin Cook, right? So there's going to be 163 open targets in this offense. He now has to compete with a rookie receiver in Jordan Addison, so there's no promise Jordan Addison is ready from day one. So if he has rookie growing pains, you know, or isn't what I think he can be at the pro level... There's even more upside for T.J. Hawkinson to get 40-plus more receptions for this Minnesota offense and really be in the conversation for tight end one uh, up there with Travis Kelsey. But, I mean, this is a guy that's that's only entering his age 26 season. He's in the middle of his prime, and he's going to be a top three option this year at the tight end position. So if you can get him in the fifth round of your drafts, he's an absolute steal of a pick to get that positional advantage on a week-to-week basis for your teams going forward. So, I mean, hey, if you start with two running backs, two receivers, or, you know, any combination of the two, or maybe even if you grab a quarterback, why not go out there and grab TJ Hawkinson? You know, finish off your drafts drafting Kirk Cousins, right? And then go from there, right, to maybe get a stack on any week-to-week basis. But that is going to do it for today's show. We're going to recap here. Our quarterback for the NFC North, based off of draft value, is going to be Justin Fields. The running back is going to be Jameer Gibbs. Christian Watson for the Packers at the wide receiver position, and our tight end is TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I mean, this team has upside, upside, upside. That is the that is the motto of this team, and uh, it's a lot less stable than the AFC North, 
right? But I think it has pretty close to the same upside as the AFC North. Uh, so let me know what you guys think down below, what you do, would do differently here in this challenge. But that's going to do it for today's show as uh, another great fantasy week and show in the books. We're going to be back next week with, you guessed it, some more build a teams uh, You guys seem to at least love the first one. And without further ado, right, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, have a great weekend, right? Stay happy, stay healthy. And we'll be back Tuesday for another great week of episodes and, and, and content here on the channel. We'll see you guys then.